Hello, my beautiful Aquarians. I hope that you are all doing well. So my name is Christiana. I will be performing this reading for you today regarding the new moon in Gemini, May 2020. So, those uh, who haven't been here before, welcome. Those who have been here before, you probably noticed that there was no intro, and that is because I released it as a standalone video. Uh, it went a little long, but all of the information contained in it was very relevant and quite an interesting story that is unfolding in the skies. So, especially if you have a high-level soulmate, uh, you identify with the twin flame journey. It's especially important, but this does apply to all of us. We all have masculine and feminine energy. We are all in this, on this journey of self-discovery, yes? So if you identify with that, then please watch that video. It's not like any astrology video you've ever seen, <laughs> I promise. All right, so this first card is going to be the chakra that needs your most attention during this time period. Psychic development. All right, we have grounding at the bottom. Perfect. As we, especially when we're working with the third eye, it's very important to be grounded. This is the Earth Star Chakra. So do some grounding, spend time in nature, right? Even like maybe meditate with a tree. <laughs> See if you can't talk with the tree, right? Like, get crazy with it. And as long as you're grounded, right, it allows you to kind of distinguish what's real, what's not. And with Neptune, this square Mercury and Venus are squaring Neptune with this new moon. And that is going to really open up the third eye. But it's also going to there's going to be a lot of messages coming in and we're going to have to be very discerning about what's real and what's not right all right so this next card is going to be an artist my intention is that it has something to teach you outside of this reading as well so if you are so inspired or, you know, take note of it and you know, look up their life, look up their work, right? See what you're drawn to. A lot of these will have, you know, you'll be able to find short documentaries. Ah, oh, yes, okay. And we have Lou Reed at the bottom of the deck. We will take a look at the underlying energies at the end of the reading and see what kind of story they tell together. So we've got Barbara Streisand. There's a lot of orange in this, right? Even here, which is the sacral chakra. That's where our emotions, our sexuality, right? The feminine. And this is, we see a star here. And this is about the rebirth of Venus, right? Venus is going retrograde. She's going to be going behind the sun and will be re-emerging as the morning star. So I kind of see this. Um, so it says, learn to write in your own blood. Some things need confessing. Others are better left unsaid. Never lose sight of the miraculous. So I've got a cat scratching and he'll scratch forever. Hold on. Sorry about that, guys. I just, I know my cats. <laughs> <laughs> and it would, it would have driven me crazy in you too, probably. All right. So, this is, you know, that transformation. We see the butterfly here. And I got drawn to the cactus because Spirit is asking us to disengage. If we are energetically connected to a person that we aren't with in real life right this energetic con connection <laughs> as opposed to in the 3d 
Spirit is asking us to disconnect from them and go, each of you go through this journey on your own. And this is eventually going to, you know, we see in this crystal ball, this person. Eventually, this is going to lead you back together. So, this is kind of signifying that dry period, right? That going into the desert, which is where we get visions. You know, the, the um, mirages and such, right? So there's, it's like the, the desert in the springtime kind of feeling. Hmm. Interesting. Which is absolutely beautiful, by the way. So there's going to be that kind of wintry, desolate period. And then we're going to have this beautiful rebirth. And this is, you know, there are things that need to be said in some cases, you know, right? Others are better left unsaid. There, we are clearing things out during this time period. We need to take care of any unfinished business. Anything that needs to be said needs to be said. If there are things that you just need to release, like, you know, write it on a piece of paper and burn it, right? It needs to be released. We need to be clearing the energy. With this uh, peacock here, too, there are going to be downloads, right? This is like the crown chakra downloads picking up it's like antenna picking up all the information around you once again we have to be very grounded very discerning about what we're picking up and then we have barbara streisand fake it till you make it it's easy to fool yourself but hard to fool an audience if you can't go right to the top find somewhere else to go Hmm. Yeah, we see this microphone. So that's kind of taking me back to, you know, what needs to be said. And, you know, this is all about mastering the nines. And with this card, I kind of feel like it's that nine of wands kind of feeling, right? You, you know, if we're not... We're, it's we're gonna have to keep on going until we finally get it right that's how that's the master maker right that's how we that's self mastery that's <clears throat> trying it once if it doesn't work out what can we improve on what might have went wrong okay well let's try again and also this determination to keep the masculine at a distance yeah, uh, yeah, I see, you know, it looks like he's holding a wand here. It's encouraging him as well. Hmm. But it's all about mastering the nines. Right, nine of wands is determination, self-motivation. Now it's automatically going toward. No, okay. I wanna go with the wisdom of the oracle for you guys. But nine of swords is overcoming our fears. These things that hold us back. Nine of Pentacles is finding our path and knowing that we are being supported on it, right? And the Nine of Cups is finding happiness by ourselves, being okay with being alone. And not just like short periods of alone time, but more extended periods of alone time, right? Knowing that no matter what comes your way, you can find happiness. Okay, yeah. Ha, huh. that's interesting. Huh, 
two, ha, huh, two times. <laughs> We've got, oh wow, look at that, 38, 37, 36. You know, it's this retrograde, right? We're kind of taking, we're going back, and also maybe even, you know, uh, a countdown of sorts. 11, 10, 9, 8, 8. Hmm. <laughs> They're kind of out of sequence here, but huh? We also have twenty-seven, twenty-six. Interesting. All right. So also interesting is that when I did this previously, I can't remember who it was that I used these on, but this same card came up in the same position. And there's twin flame all over this. <laughs> Just want to say. First of all, what I noticed the first time was, do you see this extra set of arms back here? And they're like kind of, you know, uh, see-through, right? They're not quite as uh, prominent and fully formed here. So I feel like that is the twin, right? You can't see them, but they're there all the same. And I feel like that in, you know, this is the balance of the scales. This is karma, right? This is search of truth, which is what we are doing in this time period. <clears throat> the North Node is, which is about where we're heading as as a collective is at 29 degrees of gemini which is you know the twins that's also about balance but 29 breaks down to an 11. yeah <laughs> so you know this is in search of that justice of that fairness of that balance truth and, you know, there's a wisdom in that, right? Truth is wisdom. Truth is, you know, this is... I feel like that is the highest calling. That's what I feel led me on this journey. It was a search for truth. Where, what is your truth? And that is what this is all about. And this is clearing out karma, right? With... Letting go of all of these, the past, you know, this white blossoming flower here. And she wears this mask here, all right? Fake it till you make it. There's a certain, I, I keep getting this message and um, who was it? Was it, might have been Scorpio. Hmm, I can't remember. But the mask came up over and over again with theirs, too. You know, they got the mask in reverse from the archetype desk, uh, deck. And it's all about, you know, we're trying on new masks, right? We're trying to find who our true self is. And we have to try on different masks in order to find the one that really fits, right? Because we've been wearing the same one for so long, right? This time period is about, you know, reworking all of that. You know, going through our past here. And the never-ending story, this is very, you know, we see this heart here in the mirror, yeah? Once again, this is very twin flamey because you all have had so many past lives together you're you're meant to merge and be one so during this time you know and it's not going to be easy yeah i mean she's she looks rather distraught here but it's for good you know there's the, the there's this time uh 
element here. And divine timing is at play here. This whole time period has been constructed, right? There's the fortune here. This is, there's a certain amount of fate. And on this side, it's an egg. We see an egg here. You know, this time has been created to birth something new into the world. And we have happy, happy here. Twice, right? The same word, twice. And that's you and your twin flame finding your own happiness, which will eventually, you know, birth this union. And this is just, you know, kind of, you know, it's cultivated, but then once it's cultivated, it's like, you know, this renewing energy over and over again. You know, here, we've got the same wings, but they're not very, you know, they're kind of lackluster. And then here, they're just bursting with color and, you know, your aura is going to be just shining bright. All right. And we see this star here. And so, you know, which is all about the third eye. So that's going to be, you're going to be like on top of it. And this is blue or bluish green, right? Speaking from your heart. Yeah. So... Though this time period might not be the easiest, I do think we are going to be blessed with this kind of a knowing and mm, what's the word I'm looking for? A contentment. I feel like we're going to understand and it's kind of like... Um, doing this with the brightness in our hearts really and truly because we know we can see into the future and we see th that this is actually bringing us closer than we were before right and there's almost like this freeing when I could I I've I've had to do this as well I already did it and I had a conversation with the person like you know I have a psychic connection and you may as well. If not, you can still talk to them and the, your higher, it's your higher self talking to their higher self, whether or not both of you are conscious of it, you're still connected and they will get the message, All right? This is like downloads here, sending it out and receiving it. Yeah, okay. I'm landing on the light seers. Okay, for Aquarius, please. For Aquarius, new moon and Gemini. Yeah, because the um, masculine is, you know, Mars is getting ready to move into Pisces, where, according to my favorite astrologer, he's going to be disintegrating, right? <laughs> and uh, then he moves into Aries, where he spends the rest of the year. And Aries is the emperor in the Tarot, right? So Mars is going to be, and that's the masculine, they're kind of rebuilding himself, finding, you know, he's disintegrating in Pisces during the same time period that the Venus is disappearing behind the sun, going through her rebirth, right? Going into the underworld to reclaim parts of herself. Okay. So you're both going through transformation. For Aquarius, please. New moon and Gemini. For Aquarius. New Moon in Gemini. Okay. So we got one. Oh, the Magician is at the bottom. Nice. Okay, that's a reminder that, you know, we have these eggs here. This is a new moon, right? 
So we do need to set intentions with this new moon. I kind of feel like since he's the only thing that we see, up, you know, it's face up. We'll just move him over here. Um, but sorry, guys. Um, I'm trying. <laughs> It's hard for me to, to multitask. All right, set, setting intentions. Yes, for ourselves, right? This is part of, you know, you're getting this hopefully a little bit early so that you can, um, yeah, there's that inward journey, right? And, hmm. And uh, figure out what you want. You know, this is a very powerful, you know, they've with they've been powerful. They've all been working together to create something, and you know, it's it's as a collective we need to be kind of you know yes setting intentions for ourselves. And I'm like looking at this nine of pentacles here, and but also one for the collective, right? One for the earth. So whatever intentions you're set, you're creating. Look, this is the one for the earth down here, <laughs> and this is the one for the collective. So you know, these should be a nice balance, right, between what is realistic and kind of shooting for the stars, right? We don't want to get too out of hand, but we don't want to be you know, finding that right balance. So take some time to think about what your intention is. What do you want to plant? Um, and then send it out. All right, I'm going to organize these and I'll be back. All right, so before we get started on what this all means, I just have to take you to the bottom of this deck. Um, so we have the Lemnus Gate here. We have the Lemnus Gate here. So there is definitely manifestation going on. High Priestess is a manifester. So make sure you're setting those intentions. But also, you know, we see this, it's kind of like the universe here. And I feel like there is, um, you know, once again, that this is all orchestrated. And we're paying in, playing into it, right? For both the masculine and the feminine to move into the hermit stage, right? The hermit is the embodiment of all the nines. And, you know, this is that connection being uh, cut off. But it's also the key to walking through this portal, right? Um, I saw a door in a vision. I talk about it in the uh, intro, the astrology report. But this, and once we get through that door, look at this burst of beautiful energy. And, you know, things are really going to pick up quickly. Then we have the star, right? The, the evening star, the morning star. I feel like, of course, this is you too, Aquarius. So you're kind of, you and Venus, right? Because we all have these masculine and feminine energies. This is the feminine side being represented by Venus. Moving behind the sun. <laughs> Beautiful. And then we have, you know, this is also, I feel like this is like the higher self and the uh, more practical, grounded in reality self, finding that balance because, you know, this is your challenge is finding that balance. Queen of Cups, Three of Cups, Cancer. Cancer is, is they're the portal, they're the door. Wow. Wow. The Ace of Swords, that truth. Wow. I mean, I could keep going. But <laughs> I will stop. I love this. It's just, and they're merging too. 
or they will be merging. All right, that's that Two of Pentacles. All right, so let's get into this. So I'm seeing the King of Pentacles as the masculine, and we see all of this red, which is very grounded energy. Too grounded, right? To the point that there hasn't been any more growth. The growth has been stunted with the Seven of Pentacles in reverse. So, you know, and this, of course, this is retrograde period. So we are going to be going into a, we're going to be reevaluating things, right? The Six of Pentacles is talking about that too. All right, where have we been too generous, right? The feminine has been too generous. And that is what has made the King of Pentacles so comfortable. He's got too comfortable. And we see all these little sparkles of light around. And I feel like that's the feminine's energy. And it's made him, you know, he's, he's felt that loyal companion being there. And, you know, and he appreciates it. But he's not quite conscious of it, right? He's too grounded. He's too comfortable in what he's built already. The knowledge that he's already been given. He's not open to new knowledge right now. So we have to wake him up. And we're doing that by cutting off the connection, right? We see two birds here. We see a balance, right? Walking that thin line. So this is, I feel, the Page of Swords in reverse is about cutting off that communication, right? And both of these have a lot of yellow in them. So this is going to take a lot of courage, right? On the part of the feminine. And I think at first, it's kind of like that fake it till you make it. You know, you, you, you know, might not feel all that sure about it at first. But I feel like you grow stronger, right? Because then we have the Queen of Swords. And... In this Queen of Swords, there's like, this looks like a mouse, I do believe, right? And it's behind bars here, <laughs> you know, and I feel like that's like that communication. She's, she's very hermity in this uh, card. And anyway, I see, you know, it's almost, I guess, maybe an orange and a yellow flag, right? The masculine and the feminine being represented. Finding that balance, she's got her truth, or she's searching for her truth. She has a truth. There are more truths to be discovered along this journey. She's using her discernment, though. She's, you know, turned her back on the connection for now. And this isn't out of malice. It is a seriously loving choice that's being made to cut off this connection. Then we have this Six of Swords moving into calmer waters. But, you know, this is a very turbulent card. And I look, there is like a rock back here with a little star on it. So, you know, it's like we, there's this, lit, you know, and I feel like this is the other person, right? And it's not lit up. It's almost empty. And I feel like it's because of this separation. We've got three crows pulling this ship right and this is that connection to the other side and then we have three that are flying off perhaps to the star because we have the <clears throat> mercury which rules gemini conjuncting venus and squaring neptune and then we have mars is going to conjunct neptune and what i feel like is happening and it's being shown here is that the feminine is giving it a message to Neptune with that square. And then when Mars conjuncts Neptune, he gets the message, right? <laughs> and that's kind of a roundabout way of communicating during this time. Yeah, I know. 
<laughs> but also, you know, this represents all of the contradictory information that's coming in. We're picking up on so much psychic information at this time. So many downloads, right? We see, look, the, this is very similar to this card. And through, you know, this discernment of the Queen of Swords, you know, this is very grounded. She's wrapped in the red here, but not too much red, right? <laughs> the right kind of grounding. Um, we're able to discern which messages are legitimate and which aren't, right? We're finding this balance here. And trusting our inner voice and this beautiful information that's coming into us. And it, it, look, look what it does. We get these downloads, right? These little, and this is, I'm sure, um, has to do with runes and I need to learn how to do runes <laughs> but it leads us to this nine of pinnacles right because when we're really in tune with our inner voice when we trust our gut when we trust the information that we're receiving from the universe we can deal with all the ups and downs of life, right? We can stay up. We, we know what our path is. And we learn that, you know, this is a big thing for you, Aquarius, that what we put into the universe, we're going to get back, right? We don't have to be holding on, grasping on to anything because what is ours comes back to us. You know, it's this never-ending cycle of giving and receiving, and the universe is always going to take care of you if you're on your path, you know? And it really gives us the ability to take risks, to, you know, and there, she's wearing this white dress here, right? That's that purity that we're, we're, you know, she's cleaning out throughout all this process. There's that looking within and saying our truths and, you know, letting go of what needs to be let go of. And, kind of, you know, being clear of karma by the end of this. You know, she's got a white dress on too. And underneath that we have the here and now card, which I think is very important. That's why I wanted to say, um, you know, staying present that will really help in all of this. But we have two sixes here, which is about peace and harmony. And I feel like we are coming into that. We are trusting by the end of this cycle. We are so in tune with the universe and this, this cycle of giving and receiving and knowing what our path is and being confident and moving forward in it. And this is happening on both sides, the masculine and the feminine. Beautiful. <laughs> Absolutely beautiful. Okay, let's get a piece of art. We will then get closing guidance and then we'll take a look at all the underlying energies together and see what they have to say. Because I'm already seeing a story. It's really cool. All right. For Aquarius, please. Okay. Do left. Ha! Huh. Somebody else got this. The gleaners. Yeah, I feel like this is, you know, this, we've been, do, we've done so much work. We've done so much work. And this is like the last little bit of it, you know, but there's so much, you know, I, I think about gleaning, um, the knowledge, right, from, from the lessons that we've built. And, look, there's three of them. Three, three. And, I, you know, this is, um, you know, I'm kind of getting that self-mastery, right, right? Both of you working in conjunction with spirit. You know, of course, that, that could be you, them, and spirit. You, them, you know, there's two sets of them, three sets of them now. <laughs> 
because um, you know you're each doing the work by yourselves but there's still that element you know whether or not we are feeling you know actively engaged in this connection it's still there we can never disengage from it entirely but then we also have you know the star here and you know this like I feel like very full energy, right? Yeah, you, know, you know, something being born and like flying right towards this little star, right? Hmm. It's called Women Bird by Moonlight. So bird, that air energy again. Yeah. We're cleaning it up. We're cleaning it up. The last little remnants that need to be done. All right. I'm landing on the angels and ancestors again. For Aquarius, please. That came out quickly. Hmm. Yeah. And that's interesting because I didn't quite mention that, you know, just be, being able to see from a higher perspective and that this card came out. <laughs> Eagle, see from a higher perspective. And we have Sage, be devoted and committed at the bottom of the deck. And look at all that orange. <laughs> That sacral chakra is, even though it didn't, you know, mention it, it is definitely important. All right. Let us read from the book here. So it says, look at things from a different angle. Fly higher and see new possibilities. In animal medicine, both Native American and Celtic, the eagle draws his power and strength from the sun. He is a powerful, strong, and courageous guide who is able to see for miles. He approaches all things with intelligence, grace, and poise, and has the capacity to make a plan from a higher space before putting it into action. When the eagle card appears in a reading, it shows that you have a real ability to take things higher and to move beyond the limitations of your ego and your selfish desires. Eagle medicine swirls around you, encouraging you to recognize that your views or vision may be limited <laughs> at this time. Is there a chance that your own desperation, needs, or ego could be blocking you from seeing the potential in your current situation? If there are people involved, you are being guided to see things from everyone's perspective. If you are feeling the need for something to change, how can you take the higher road? Know that if you have intentions that aren't for the highest good, it will only hold you back. Eagle medicine can help you change this. The eagle brings the energy of healing and love directly from the heart of Father Sky and invites you to do all things from a place of love. Yeah. So more air energy. And, you know, this blue is representative of Archangel Michael. So if you need any help, any courage during this time, you can call upon him. And, you know, I feel like it's, there, there's going to be some of us who are very resistant, yeah, to, doing this but if you really like you know where where are you making that decision from is it from fear of losing out on this connection if so remember we need to make our decisions based on what we want right not out of fear fake it till you make it you know you can Started out as a trial period. 
All right, let's take a look at the underlying energies. So we've got Sage, be devoted and committed. Lou Reed, I think of you, but not that often. And that's, you know, trying to kind of block those thoughts, right? Survive your own war, right? This is a time to go it alone. Learn to walk hand in hand with magic and loss. <laughs> Because, you know, we, the magic is being made from, you know, this sacrifice. It is a sacrifice of sorts. Come to the edge. You know, that is what is happening here. We're going to have to really kind of, you know, take a leap of faith and be trusting that... You know, we're going to be caught. Right? It's just a little bit of earth here. You know, that's how much grounding you need. <laughs> and this is, you know, doing this out of love. These little hearts floating behind her. You know, take this leap of faith, guys. Because it's... It's going to manifest your desires. This is part of being that, you know, being devoted and committed. And look, there's a peacock feather here and here. I want, and you know, all that orange. I'm going to read from this as well. Because if you're still here, you are totally resonating with this and you might want to hear it. <laughs> I feel drawn to do it. Be willing to go the whole road and back again. Yeah, because, we, I mean, like, we, we're going to have to stay determined. I mean, I'm telling you, ever since the first day that I was told that I needed to let go of the connection, and I had my little psychic conversation, you know, and it was very bittersweet, um, every day, Spirit is talking about this. You know, I, I do cards for us uh, you know i call it my conversation with spirit and every day <laughs> spirit is talking about it you know to remind me and it, you might be needing to remind yourself along the way you know this is that's what all almost every single reading has been very similar to this because it's that important we are kind of um, gelling together as a collective, right? This higher consciousness collective that is tuning in to these readings. We're all kind of on the same path right now. And, you know, it's important that we're working together to create this magic. Magic. <laughs> magic. <laughs> it's happening. Right? Okay. <clears throat> the sage represents the wise one within. When this card arises, it shows that you are preparing to become a great and insightful teacher to your peers. It guides you to take notes as the wandering yogi is on this card. Because your knowledge and life experiences can impart incredible insights to those with whom you come into contact. This card is also about observation and becoming more aware of who you are and all your inner workings because that awareness can bring more clarity to your decisions. Devotion is a powerful energy. Right now, angels and ancestors want to acknowledge how committed you are to your growth. Your continued dedication to this aspect of your life has been recognized. And your understanding that you are not only a body, but also a soul, is all you need to continue growing and expanding. The energy of oneness is offering itself to you now, and it's important you take some time to integrate it all, so that you can be supported and guided by it. This is what the Divine wants for you. Make a note of experiences or teachers making themselves known to you at this time, because you are going to share those teachings one day too. The energy of oneness, right? The magician is a one. The nines are all about 
the one, right? <clears throat> the elder is underneath that. Move beyond ancestral patterns. And that is what, you know, we are breaking through karma. It's a beautiful time. This is what we kind of, this is like, you know, that sacrifice that we're kind of, because I know it feels good to feel that connection, but sacrificing this now is actually going to lead to a lot more beautiful things coming in. Yeah. <clears throat> so, pay your respects to the earth as well, right? Even this magician is, you know, she's moving into earth, right? She's going down below. She's using the magic of earth. He's sitting with a tree, right? So this very earthy energy is coming in, even for cards that aren't necessarily typically earth. So yeah, okay guys, I suppose I will let you go now. <laughs> I hope that this resonated. I hope it helped. If so, please remember to like, subscribe, comment, share. And until next time, Aquarius, much love.